Hello friends. In my previous video, I started discussing with you about a disease that we see in India and South Asia, which is Kyle urea. And uh, in this video, I shall be talking to you about the another aspect of this disease. How does chronic kyluria influence the patient? When patient is having attacks of kyluria, depending upon the duration of kyluria, the patient show various effects. But before we go into that, let us first see when patient passes chyle through urine, what does he lose? This is what is the urine, like milk. And this contains many small biochemical molecules. It contains albumin, globulin and fibrin. It contains lots of lymphocytes. And it also contains plenty of chylomicrons, which in itself contains cholesterol, phospholipids and triglycerides and proteins. So, patient is having what? Patient is having loss of lipids and fatty acids and patient is also losing fat soluble vitamins. So that is what the patient will lose if he has chyluria. How does it harm the patient? A patient who usually has you know some degree of good health, maybe some paunch, some fat, and then when he gets chyluria, he starts suffering from urological morbidity because chyle is coming in the urine and uh, it can create effects. I will talk about this later. Or he can have nutritional consequences on account of losing chyle in urine and from the body. And he can have immunological consequences because of loss of globulins and lymphocytes through urine. So these are three kinds of ways by which patient may be adversely affected. So we will see first what is the urologic morbidity. The chyluria is seen in mild form where patients complain of passing whitish urine. Urine looks slightly white more like buttermilk or even less dense than that and the episodes are intermittent. Some patients have moderate chyluria where the milkiness of urine increases and become thick white urine and he passes four times in a day urine every time passing thick white milky urine and then there is a third variety of chyluria where it is called severe and patients passing chylus clots in the bladder and often they present to us with urinary retention. Passing th thick curdy white clots. So this is the kind of symptoms the patient will have if they have pure chyluria. But some patients have, as I said to you earlier, chylohematuria. And in chylohematuria also, they will have either a mild type where the urine will look just like pinkish white or they can have moderate variety where the urine has thick red and white urine. Blood is also there, chyle is also there, both are significant in amount. And patient will have severe hematochyluria where they have formation of blood and chyle clot in the bladder. So, pure chyluria or chylohematuria, both the entities can present separately in these three shades. When this is the case, blood and chyle clot in bladder, patients often develop by that time significant anemia and hyperproteinemia. About the nutritional morbidity, as I said, there is a protein loss happening in the patient and they are losing albumin because of which often they complain of edema and profound weakness. 
fibrin and globulins. The fibrin is responsible for clot formation and globulins result into some kind of immunodeficiency state. They are also losing fat and depending upon the duration of fat loss, patients have loss of lipids and therefore they get weight loss and those patients who have chyluria for many many months, they develop neuropsychiatric changes because brain needs cholesterol, brain needs lipids for it to function well and because of the deficiency state, the neurons suffer. Patients lose fat soluble vitamins and they get deficiency in vitamin A and vitamin D. And when this fat loss is very severe and continuous type, patients become almost cachexic. And I have seen very, very moribund patient as a result of chronic persistent chyluria. The third morbidity is immunological morbidity. The patients are losing lymphocytes in urine and uh, chyluria is the only condition in urology where patients lose lymphocytes through the urine. So lymphocytes in urine is considered a sign qua none for chyluria. Because of the loss of lymphocytes, patient gets low cell mediated immunity. And we have also seen that there occurs reversal of the ratio of CD4 and CD8 and there is something as you see in AIDS, same kind of reversal taking place in some patients of chyluria. And then I, I told you earlier the loss of globulins because of all these things patients develop a state of immunodeficiency. So that is how the patient gets adversely affected by chronic persistent chyluria. And that is why we have to treat this disease. So in my part 3, I will talk to you about how is the chyluria diagnosed? What steps do we take in making a scientific diagnosis? So thank you very much for being with me here. In case you have any questions and comments, please uh, write to me on my email.